We've just crossed the heart of South Africa, 1,300 kilometers across the dry expanse of the Great Karoo, all the way up into its top left-hand corner, a region known as the Hantam. It's bounded to the west and southwest by the snow-capped peaks of the Groot Winterhoek and Cedarberg Mountains, and then further west by the cold swells of the Atlantic Ocean, on its east and south by the Great Karoo itself. It's a special region, high up on a plateau overlooking the lowlands closer to the coast. It receives winter rainfall, and that is a very special thing. There's a reason we drove pretty much all across South Africa to very close to the square kilometer array, the new telescope that's pointing up at the stars above. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't anything to do with that. I'm hoping these clouds will clear by this afternoon. There's a light drizzle setting in. Uh, which just goes to show one should always try and take the photographs one can at the time one can. And I was wrapped up in my warm bed last night, enjoying the blankets and the sheets and the soft pillows instead of out there amongst the rocks and the cacti and the quiver trees taking photographs. Let's hope that we get some better weather this evening. The gravel road finds us heading south past the town of Nivoteville and into an area called Matisfontein, a farm settled originally in the 1700s. Now, the secret here are the sheep graze meadows because in the Macquiland, in springtime, with the addition of a little rain, that equals magic. The first time I visited this area, was back in 2016, actually on our honeymoon. We only had a few days here and I have to admit, I felt intimidated by the landscape. It was, to be fair, incredibly dry. It was a massive drought that year and there weren't any flowers. But still, I felt that I couldn't find a good photograph anywhere. That was until I wandered into a roadside cafe for lunch and found a book by a Japanese photographer named Shin Sawano. It's called Forgotten Paradise, and leafing through it, I found an absolute wealth of inspiration. This guy really understands the soul of Namaqualand and how to photograph it. Well, we started out this morning with an overcast, but the clouds are clearing now, and we found what we're looking for these wonderful spring flowers in the Markwaland. The only problem we've got is it's a little chilly, in fact, very chilly. You can probably tell because I'm wearing this down puffer jacket. But what that means is the flowers are actually closed at the moment and they only open when it gets to around 20 degrees. But we found them. They're right here and they're covering the spring landscape of Namaqualand everywhere we look. I'm definitely not made for contortions and lying down on the ground trying to get underneath a three inch flower to photograph it up against this wonderful blue sky. But I'm going to try anyway.
I'm on my way to try and photograph some stars and they're about 30, 30 kilometers away, the site that I'm going to from where I'm staying here at Hrasberg uh, in the Hantam Karoo. Now the sky's cleared up, cleared up quite nicely, uh, which is really, really good, but the forecast is minus one, so it's going to be cold and I'm going to have to be there pretty much most of the night because the Milky Way is directly overhead earlier on in the evening and then only sets at around three in the morning. So the aim is to get out there quite early, about two hours before sunset, to set up hopefully a time lapse. But I'm prepared to sacrifice the time lapse if it gets in the way of my other astro shots. So fingers crossed I can get all of this done and not freeze to death while I'm doing it. It's windy as hell here and the sun's just gone down. I'm just going to hide in the shelter of Basil. Hopefully you can get some decent audio. So my time lapse rig is up there on that hill, which I had to walk up like the Duke of York about 10,000 times. And it's windy up there, so I've hidden it behind a tree. And uh, it seems to be working and ramping at the moment. Fingers crossed. But it took every minute of time I had to get this bloody thing going. It wasn't easy. I'm in this beautiful location though, and really looking forward to photographing this area when the stars come out later. Now the stars are going to be aligned directly overhead as soon as it gets dark in the sort of midday position and they're going to fold away westward like that during the course of the night and set at about 3 a.m. So what do I need to do? I need to head around that corner there into a little bit of a, a cul-de-sac away from the wind hopefully and away from my time lapse set up my lights and photograph up in this direction and hopefully get that center of the Milky Way, the core, in my photographs a little bit later on. Well, I'm dressed up like a Sherpa, as you can probably see. I've got uh, various accoutrements uh, over me here. I've got my uh, camera, a couple of cameras, a couple of lenses, a Sigma 14 to 24 f2.8 and a Sigma 35 f1.4. And my aim is to carry all of this equipment, my lights, my recording equipment, everything I need up to a little campsite uh, that's an in inverted commas a, a place to uh, a promising place uh, to photograph the night sky and just wait there with my gear and just photograph what comes to me so i don't have to trek too far with all of this crap i've got light stands a couple of tripods a couple of cameras uh, one of the cameras i have to tote over my shoulder which i'm never pleased about so i've got that lens the lens for that camera the big 14 to 24 tucked away in my backpack so it's only the camera that I'm risking with the lens uh, with the body cap on and uh, let's hope some shots come out tonight. Right let's go and see if I can show you the trees it's quite hard in this pitch darkness to see what's going on. So this is a quiver tree. It's a type of aloe, aloe dichotoma, I think it's called. And it grows in harsh, arid environments like this. And uh, it looks beautiful against starlight. So that's the plan. Photograph these trees under the stars. That's the light over there. That's my light, it's a floodlight. An LED panel over it. 45 degrees from my subject. I don't know what you can see, if anything, in front of me here. If I pan over there, there's another light, 45 degrees. And that's illuminating the scene in front of me. Uh, which is a bunch of trees. 
There's my tripod. The only noise out here is me. I'm gonna try and get a wider scene with a panoramic head now of me under these trees and the Milky Way. It's 1.40 in the morning and I've just got back from, well, I just got back to the car from photographing the quiver trees under the Milky Way on this moonless night and I uh, felt a little bit, little bit more on top of my game because I took less stuff with me and I think that really helped. Just one lens, tripod, no pano heads, nothing and a couple of lights and hopefully I got a few good, a few good shots out of it. Uh, obviously I'm not making that much sense because I'm absolutely exhausted but uh, yeah hopefully I got a few good shots and I'm just really disappointed that I couldn't find a way to to show you in video what it's like out here it's pitch black there's no light pollution whatsoever none not a jot it's just starlight and this wonderful landscape in the uh, northwest of south africa It's sunrise out there and uh, there's very few places I think less comfortable for a few hours sleep than a Land Rover's driving seat. Sorry Basil. I think it's time for me to pop the door and head up the hill to see if there's any nice shots to be had this morning. It's cold out there too. It's cold in here. 